debate. One of the things about parliamentary debate is it goes really, really fast, right? Not just in terms of the way that people speak, because that's not always necessarily true, but in terms of you getting a resolution, something like this, and how much time you have to then start coming up with disadvantages. So the reason I want to start with the resolution is because initially, this is all you have and nothing else to go on. Right? It's not like Lincoln Douglas debate where you have sort of an idea of what the types of cases out there are, or where there's a wiki where a bunch of people have their cases already there for you to start generating offense off of. This is it. So, if you get a resolution like this, what type of things should you start asking yourself? What are the advantages of engaging with the nation states area? Sure. What are the advantages? What else? Before we even get there, what does it mean to militarily engage? Could mean sending troops there, could mean sending a nuclear weapon over there, could be anything in between. Which means that this term, military engage, is variable. Right? So when you're generating disadvantages, or you're thinking about how you can interact with this case, what you should start to think of is A, how can I make arguments against militarily engaging in general? B, what are specific forms of military engagement? that I shouldn't necessarily prep out arguments for, but that I should be prepared to answer. So for example, if they go small, and they say, put troops in Syria, how can you engage with them? Well, you can look at, like, if you put troops in Syria, how will the peoples of Syria be affected? Like, what bad things could happen by putting troops in Syria? Um, okay. Economic costs of uh, deploying troops on the ground. Okay. What else? Whether or not we'll lose our troops. Okay. So casualties. Yeah. Let's see the benefit of going there in the first place. Why do it? What else? Will actually change anything? Will change, so solvency. Do the United States and Syria exist in a vacuum of space time? Mm -hmm. No. Right. So any action, <clears throat> any change in relationship between the United States and Syria doesn't simply involve the United States and Syria, it involves the international community. Yeah. How will Russia react? How will Russia react? What else? Will our allies join us? Allies. So what about NATO? <laughs> will it destabilize the region? Will it destabilize the region? So the ripple effects. <laughs> Right? And these are the kinds of questions that you need to start asking immediately. As soon as you hear the resolution, as soon as your coach or whoever is writing it on the board, you should start thinking, what does this look like in the bigger picture? What context does this resolution exist in? Because if you're thinking about it only in terms of the United States and Syria, then you're going to be missing 99% of what it is that's actually happening. Right? <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, we can define that as the political structure that exists in Syria, but not necessarily everyone that is in Syria, say like the, the rebels and whatnot. Right. So why is that particularly important considering the situation in Syria? So built into this, you can argue, is a slide. 
right? The government doesn't get to just stand up and say, we are going to send military troops to help the rebels in Syria, because it's the nation state. They could make an argument, maybe, that it's a poorly worded resolution, and that this puts them in a bind, because you can't separate the people from the nation, the nation state, that they're one and the same. But as the negative, you want to argue that the resolution specifically says nation state, meaning you have to support the government of Assad. Why do you want to frame the debate that way if you're on the negative? Because a little wipes on right. now. Because the international community isn't really going to be down with that. Right? It would be a huge change in stance in terms of how the United States is dealing with the situation in Syria. It would give like a low probability of help from outside forces. Sure. And it would be a weird switch towards pro-Russian policies. Yeah. But it doesn't say help the nation state, it says engage the nation state. Right. So it could not be either way. It could be either way. But as the negative, which we want. Yeah. Right. So a big part of the disadvantage conversation, a big part of writing disadvantages, before you even before you even start thinking about the structure of the disadvantage, is how can I interpret this? How can I frame this? What is here that is open to interpretation? What is here that needs to be framed? What is here that allows me to frame strategically? Those questions are questions that a lot of people forget to ask which means that you have a lot of leeway and a lot of power in terms of how you can go about doing this. It doesn't mean that you should put all your eggs in one basket and assume that they're gonna go along with how you want to frame the debate, because if you lose that part of the debate, then you're gonna lose everything, right? Because nothing else is stick. Yeah? Let's say I'm the negative for this uh, particular uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, how would you how would you go about it since this is kind of like, it's very open to interpretation mm -hmm. and forming like a negative position from this question would be quite difficult. If because they cause they can say like um, they can go from being like you know engaged with Russia or wow. um, I mean, I mean engage, engage against the nation state of Syria at Syria right. Iraq, or engage with the nation state of Syria. Yeah. So I think that what I would isolate is the term of art militarily engaged. Isn't the affirmative side the one that's framing the debate because they're deciding what the plan is? The affirmative side is the first side that frames the debate. But as the negative, topicality is your right to challenge that framing of the debate based off of how you warrant out, right? How you argue that their framing of the debate either is incoherent with resolution, right, with the wording of the resolution, so it doesn't make sense, excuse me, or that it's abusive, right, that they're pitching, that they're pushing you out of your ground, that the resolution is set up to dictate a certain amount of ground to one side and the other, but that they define it in a way that excludes a bunch of arguments that would be damning to the resolution. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so to go back to your question, I would focus on this as a term of art, right? Military lineage, which means you can't just put troops, right? Because that's not actually an engagement unless it's in conflict with what Syria wants. So it has to be something that is pushing some type of conflict, right? The rules of engagement don't mean we just show up, right? The rules of engagement are rules that are meant to be followed followed in terms of the two parties having an actual clash. Okay? So at that point, the specifics of it are sort of irrelevant. You don't start thinking about disadvantages in terms of what exactly are they going to do, because you're never going to be able to guess that. Or it's very rare that you'll be able to guess that. Except for resolutions where they give you an actual bill number, right? Because then you can pull up the bill and start poking holes in the bill itself. But when it's a general action, right, that general action is your launch pad. It's where you start to say, okay, they have to do something in this arena. Therefore, let me approach it from a general perspective and say why that's bad or how that could cause problems. 
right? And one of the ways that you can do that with something like this is the Russia response. You can argue that it's a flashpoint for Russia or an engagement between the United States and Russia. And then you would immediately, right, because the next part is where is some evidence, right? How can I pull up some sources to validate my argument? You can point towards Vietnam. You can point towards Afghanistan and how that was also an issue that was arguably between the US and Russia that was into something else. You can point towards previous disagreements in Syria between the United States and Russia. And you can point towards an international conversation revolving around Syria and the position that Russia has taken relative to the position that the United States has taken. Right? When you start digging into current events about all of those things, they're all going to demonstrate to you that the United States and Russia are not on the same side. So if you're militarily engaging the nation state, which, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to argue that means the government, and the official government in Syria is Assad, which Russia supports, then immediately the U.S. is taking a stance against Russian interests. Yeah. I have a bit of an unrelated question. Is there ever a chance where we get to get on the same page and talk to our debate partner during the debate? Um, that is going to depend on your judge. For the most part, I think that a couple words in between your speeches is fine. For the most part, I think that your judges don't mind if you're confused about something and you look to your partner and you say, that, da, da, da. you know, what do you think about this? Yeah, that's fine. Also, for the most part, I think your judges aren't going to mind if you're quietly whispering stuff to each other during the other speech while you're flowing. Right? It shouldn't be disruptive. It shouldn't be mental to throw the other person off of their speech. Um, but yeah, I think for most judges, that's going to be entirely reasonable. Um, I would ask prior to the round, right? ask your judge, how do you feel about communication? Is it fine Like if I ask my partner a question during my speech? Uh, is it fine if we're like, you know, quietly trying to sort stuff out, um, and those types of things. Because I have seen some judges be real sticklers about it. Um, and I've seen literally one time a team lose around before partner partner conversation. But that's unusual. That's not typical. Other questions about that? Yeah. Cool. So this is the stable something. Right? Regardless of what they do, regardless of what the affirmative says, what the plan is, this should be stable. There should be some form of military engagement, and that military engagement should be with the nation state of Syria. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen, but that's why you have topicality as a check. Right? But this discussion is about disadvantages, and topicality is like a whole other area. Luxury. So we're going to stay. We're going to assume that they stay within the topic. Okay. And then yeah. And then it just depends on what gives you the most offense. Do you want to talk about the ripple effects? What this can do to the region in its entirety? How it affects current treaties? Whatever else it may be. The big stick impact here, meaning like worst case scenario, is that this turns into war between the United States and Russia. That's a flashpoint area there, and we end up in another Vietnam situation, or more directly between the US and Russia, which would probably be worse. Uh, so a disadvantage, as you said, by all the US forces? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what I'm talking about right now really is the, what would be the end? Right. Okay. right, or the scenario. Okay. okay. There's different things. So, let's pick one. Which one do you all want to talk about?
Does anybody know what these words mean? Word. Go. Right. What's the top? So the weakness would be like where you list all the statistics telling them like how the um, military engagement or how likely the military engagement is going to be kind of. There's like where you list all your statistics. And then yeah. like would be like what would happen if the plan passes. And then the internal links would be like how you get from um, where you are to those to your impacts. And then your impacts would be all the terrible things that would happen okay. um, with the military Okay. Not quite. It's close. Let's stick with just the uniqueness for now. It's, it's kind of like just talking about what's going, like what's happening in the world that's, that compares to this situation, like compares to a link to the situation. Status quo. Yeah. Great. If you have a disadvantage that says, or if they have a plan, I don't want to say this. No. Your disadvantage shouldn't be hinging on something that already exists. What I mean is, your disadvantage shouldn't be based on there being tension between the United States and Russia. Why? Because there is tension between the United States and Russia. Right? That's how things are right now. So, as the affirmative, if things are already tense between the United States and Russia, and the reason you say my plan is a bad idea is because it will make things tense between the United States and Russia, my response is going to be, well, that's then not a unique reason to not pass my plan because that exists with and without my plan. You have to think of a good thing. Are you talking about disadvantage for this part? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about a good thing that's half, like a status quo, yeah. like a good status quo, basically, right? Right. Yeah. Good or neutral. Okay. Or building towards or walking towards a cliff. Right? And when I say walking towards a cliff, what I mean is, if that's the edge of the cliff, you want to put the uniqueness about you. So you could say that um, while relations with Russia are bad, we are currently not at war with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So, uniqueness. The A argument. The status quo. Currently, things are tense between the United States and Russia. This is proven by, and this is where the statistics and stuff will come in, the current events. Right? One thing that you could point out is the election investigations. Uh, another thing you could point out is what happened in Ukraine a while back. Um, conversations revolving around Syria, all these different things, right? Things are tense. But, as bad as we may feel about election intervention, that's a lot different from thousands of people dying because we're shooting each other or launching missiles at each other. That's not currently happening. We don't currently have open engagement between the United States and Russia. That's your uniqueness, right? Your B, your link, Ties the uniqueness to the plug. Yes? So that would be like if we interfere with Syria, or if the military engage the nation state of Syria, we might start a problem with Russia. Right. And ideally, you'll have something in the uniqueness that is leading you into the world. Meaning, a piece of evidence or something that says, Russia has explicitly stated that if the United States militarily engages or supports the rebels in Syria, they will respond in kind. Right? Because that would be a uniqueness. That's current. That's what's already happening. That's the known world. And then that gives you the leeway into your link, which is that we militarily engage. Right? And the thing that you're linking to is what we're eventually going to talk about, which is down here in the Okay. So if Russia says, if you militarily engage, we're going to militarily engage, then the link is just engagement. You're right. We're not at war right now. And we would like for things to stay with us not being at war. 
But Russia has explicitly said that if we militarily engage, that we are going to have war. Your plan is military engagement, which means that you pull the trigger. We are not at war. That's the link. Right? That's what's going to lead to all the bad stuff, is that initial action. And the link should always be tied to the initial action of the plan. Or at least the strongest links are tied to the initial action of the plan. Right? And for politics disadvantages, that'll look something like there's a certain number of swing votes. They have said they're not going to vote on this unless da 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 And this plan shouldn't, like the policy shouldn't pass because whatever. And then the link will be that you are passing the policy that they said they didn't want to pass. So now they're going to vote the other way. Does that make sense? Make sense enough? Yeah? Okay. So this is just a more explicit example of that. Right? Where they say don't take this specific action, and the plan is that specific action. So what are the internal links? What happens after? So we could say um, there is war. Can we say that? Yes. You could. That would work. So I'm going to walk it back a little bit um, just to make this analogy work. Right? So the engagement would be the link. Right? That's, what starts, that's the push towards the end of the book. Right, the internal link story, uh, if you're jumping, like, I don't know explain that. A shallow disadvantage would just jump straight into there's war and then people are dying. Right? But if you want to flesh out your position, you're explaining these steps from wherever you're at in the uniqueness, wherever the status quo is, to the end of the clip. Does that make sense? So, are we. When we do like the link internally, are we sort of saying like hypothetically that this argument goes through? Um, uh, these will be like the consequences, or are we focusing more on like the status quo is good and we just want to keep the status quo? If that makes sense. You can do either or. Okay. Right. But what you want to focus on for disadvantages, especially in, in your leader of opposition speech, right, is that bad things are going to happen because of what we are hypothetically doing. And the we being the affirmative, right? And when you say that bad things will, will happen, is that a link scenario? Is that an impact scenario? No, that's not an impact scenario, that's a link scenario, right? It depends on how you define bad things, yeah. right? But usually the bad thing, right, the actual force, the hit, right, the not only am I falling off the cliff, but I've now hit the floor, is the impact. Right? But the reason I say it depends on how you define that is because these are all bad things. Right? Within the structure of a disadvantage, the uniqueness is the only neutral thing. Right? The uniqueness just says, this is just how things are right now. The link says, you messed that up. Things are okay, we have some sort of equilibrium, and you mess it up. And now we don't have balance, and we're stumbling towards this edge. And apparently we're looking at our text messages, not paying attention, and then boom. Right? And then your internal links are these steps, towards the edge and off of it. And your impact is, in this metaphor, literally the impact, right? It's so when you hit the four. So when we frame the disadvantages, will we be using the words uniqueness, link, internal link, and impact? Yes. All right. Yeah. Especially if you're a novice, um, it'll really set you apart from your from your opponents if you're able to have the structure, and it will really help your judge understand where it is that you are. Can you flesh out like what the internal link would sound like or look like if you were doing it? Well, yeah. Yeah. So for this. Right? The link is engagement. Right? The internal link is Russia has already said that they would militarily respond. 
so they militarily respond, which leads to a flashpoint, right? We now have a war, which you could argue is a proxy war, between the United States and Russia, which is really being fought out as the Syrian rebels versus the Syrian government. Right? Following? Okay. That's still not the impact, right? Because this is still talking in terms of scenario and not material consequences. Right? The material consequences, which would be then then become the impact, is the aftermath. So, okay. so just to, um I know you said that internal link already, but there was like a lot of information. Like, what would be one of the internal links for this um, this resolution? Yeah. So one of the internal links would be. U.S. and Russia centuries. Okay. Right. Or even before that. Because this would be literally the process. Russia declares war. Russia declares war. Because that's an official thing on the U.S. And then the U.S. declares war on Russia. So for the internal, do you think of you think of the disadvantages of you like you? So you could have the, the disadvantages for the internal link, basically? Because I'm kind of confused with, I'm kind of confused with what you're supposed to put down for the internal link. The internal links are the steps to the end. Okay. Right, so say for example, um, well before I get into that, let me hear your question. Oh, um, so for impact, can we say that um, due to Planning to be in an engagement, the impact would be a loss of resources, loss of lives, loss of money. Yeah. So say for example, let's use Terminator, right? Like as a way to think about this. The impact of Terminator, right, the dystopian future that we are brought into is a world in which humans are no longer running the world, the majority of humans are dead and they are hiding from robots, right? That's, that's the impact. That's the, here's what the world now looks like. The things that led to that, the internal links, are the establishment of Skynet, which is an artificial intelligence defense mechanism, and the systematic way in which Skynet creates that situation. Following? Yeah, like, the informa like basically what you said, like the information that leads to the impact. Right. So here, the impact that I would go for is dead rebels and civilians. Loss of life sucks, yes. On either side, that's a bad thing. But, think about it. Who is this case concerned with? Nation states. Huh? Nation states here. That's who they're concerned with in terms of engaging. Who are they worried about? Who does they want to protect? Yeah. Or support? The rebels. Rebels. Right? If you're militarily engaging with the nation state of Syria, it's probably because you're supporting the individuals in Syria that are already militarily engaging with the nation state of Syria. Right? So you want to help the rebels. So if the impact is focused on the rebels and the civilians, because I guarantee you that would be a part of the harm scenario coming out of this affirmative, then that means that you are turning the case. Do we know what that phrase means? No? Okay. So all of their offense is going to be Assad bad, Syrian government bad. Here's what they're doing to their people. Here's what they're doing to their civilians. Here's why we should intervene. Okay? 
this whole disadvantage is basically going to the story that, sure, that's bad, but right now the United States and Russia aren't heavily involved. Us engaging means that now it's not a war in Syria between the rebels and Assad, with some Russian support on the Assad side, but now it's a war in Syria between the United States and Russia, each backing the rebels and Assad. So in terms of what that looks like, in terms of conflict, there's a huge difference, right? If I get into a fight with somebody that's about my same size, and we're going back and forth, and I have someone coaching me on this side, and he has someone coaching him on that side, there's only so much damage we could do to each other, right? Assuming we're just using hands. If I then tag in my coach, and I'm like, hey, help me out, and that person happens to be Mike Tyson, there's going to be a huge difference in terms of the impact, right? What that punch is going to do to that person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, given in this analogy, they would also tag in their coach, right? But what happens there is the general force that is being put out within that arena is going to become exponentially higher. Yes? So I have a question about the types of resolutions we'll be getting. Sure. Um, so will they always be, in a way, challenging the status quo, like this one right here saying, currently we are not engaging with the nation state, um, and we should engage with the nation state. And does that mean that we will never get one that says the US federal government should remain neutral? Uh, you might. Hmm. It's possible. What would you put as the news for this situation? Like for this resolution right here? Like that we're not currently in well, that would be for the disadvantage. The, unique, the uniqueness in terms of the resolution, right, would be that uh, we are not currently militarily engaging. It has to be a fact, right? Yeah. It has to be true. Yeah. Okay. If it's not true, then it all falls apart, right? Right, yeah. Because your basic argument or your basic ground is the status quo. So if we are already militarily engaging Syria, then you have no ground. Right? The sites flip. All of a sudden, you become the one advocating for the change, which is not the role of the opposition. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Questions? Okay. So, in terms of what the case term is, is saying, we should do this in order to protect the rebels. We should do this in order to defeat Assad, right, to defeat the government. You're saying, don't. But this isn't actually going to be between the United States and Assad's government, because once we engage, Russia will engage. Which means that we're probably not going to be fighting with each other, right, on each other's land, because of how far away we are, because of where the troops are already are at, but it's probably going to be fought out in Syria. Does that make sense? Because that's how, well, it's not how Fox would lose Britain, so that would be an actual war, right? But why bring it home? Leave the fight over there, right? It's revolving around Syria, so keep it in Syria. So all the devastation, all the aftermath of what happens, happens in Syria. So all of the crumbled infrastructure, all of the deaths, all of the shrapnel, all of the whatever else is left behind would happen in Syria. Which is going to be terrible for the Syrian people. On both sides. And it's probably going to mean that more rebels will die. And will have a lower quality of life for the foreseeable future because of that devastation. So you're saying all of your offense, all of the things that you claim to fix and or make better, the entire impetus for your plan of action, not only do you fail at, not only do you not accomplish that, 
but you make things worse. Understand? And that is why I like to think of speech in, or debate in terms of jujitsu. Because it's about leverage, and it's about weight. So if they're pushing all of their leverage into, we're going to help the Syrians, right, we're going to help the rebels, we're going to help the rebels, then you just need to find a pivot point that shows how they're actually making that situation worse, and how doing nothing is better, or come up with a counter plan that's better. And then, that's where the flip happens. And you're now the one on top. Yeah. So if they make a plan and then you make a counter plan, your counter plan, even as the negative, could agree with the resolution. Resolution. That is arguable. Uh, there's yeah a bunch of debaters will feel differently about that, and that gets into an interesting degree debate. Uh, one of the arguments will be that once they choose a resolution, I mean once they choose a plan, a plan of action, a policy. Right, the resolution for the round, the topic of the round, is no longer the broad resolution, but has then been parametricized or narrowed down to whatever it is that the affirmative is saying or arguing. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're just about out of time, so if y'all have questions, I'll just take questions. If not, then I think it's not. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Anyone more confused? Learn. <laughs> yeah. Are those structured? Is it just the leader of opposition speech, or is this also for like the member? Is it structured this way? Uh, well, it's a constructive. So usually it's the leader of opposition. The only caveat to that would be if a member of government is running a disadvantage to a counter. So what would a member of government and a member of government speech look like? Uh, primarily refutation. Right, so they would say, look to their uniqueness, where they say that tensions, well, what a good defense towards the uniqueness argument is that the uniqueness overwhelms the link. Right, so where in my analogy, they're just standing near the edge of the cliff, and they're not moving, there's no momentum, right, it's just stable. The uniqueness overwhelms the link argument says they're already moving towards the link. Right? So where we say tensions are already high, therefore this is what's needed to trigger this scenario, they would say tensions are high and getting higher. And that will eventually trigger? Yes. And it's going to happen anyways. Mm -hmm. Right? So like a war is inevitable type thing is an argument that we hear. I think we've only talked about constructive uh, debates. Can we like go over the rebuttal for like a minute? Sure. If you yeah. Um, they're very different speeches. Right? So the member of government, which we don't call a rebuttal, but is a rebuttal, a rebuttal right? It's rebutting the leader of opposition speech. Um, for the MG, it's, it depends on the MG should always focus on their attack, right? And should always be a matter of clarifying, right? You never want to forget your case. So you don't want to go through your entire MG speech without bringing up anything in your case. Because if you do that, and they have a couple arguments sitting on the case, right, there's the notion that if you concede the argument, then that means that for the purposes of the round, the argument's true. Right? So if you miss like a solvency takeout, for example, because your opponent read three or four disadvantages and you're stuck arguing the disadvantages, then even if you win the disadvantages, they can argue, but you lost your solvency, which means you're not meeting your stock issues, which means that you don't win the round. Right? So for the MG, it should be a strategic, what are the one-shot kills? Right? Meaning, what are the arguments that if I don't respond to, we lose? Typically, that's going to be procedures. Right? Positions like a topicality or like different specification arguments because there'll be a stipulation in the argument 
that says you have violated basically the decorum, that you're not operating within the realm of what the debate should operate like, and that as a punishment for that, or a reprimand for that, you should lose the round. Usually a part of that argument will be that you are excluding them from the round via that violation. So if you're a member of the government, you need to get to those arguments first. Because if you lose the topicality, right, if they have a position that's saying, you're actually not talking about this, and then you lose that position, well, you can't win that this is true if you're not talking about it. Does that make sense? Like, if I argue brown is beautiful, and then show you a bunch of pictures that are yellow, there's no, there's no correlation. Right? You can be like, well, yeah, cool. Those pictures are beautiful, but none of them are brown. So, why do I care? And that's really what a topicality says. Right? It's like, yo, this argumentation is dope. It's awesome. But it has nothing to do with this resolution. Make sense? So as a member of government, that needs to be something that you're able to point, figure out and recognize. Also, when you're attacking disadvantages as a member of government, you want to keep in mind what's important. And you want to be careful that you don't make arguments that are conflicting with you. Right? So, one of the things that you might do is say the uniqueness overwhelms the link argument. Right? This is going to happen anyways. So none of the rest of this actually matters because it's not specific to my client. <clears throat> you don't want that to be your only argument, but it is a strategic and effective defensive argument. Right? Another argument, because this is the weight, right? Like this is what hurts. Right? It's in the name, it's the impact. So this is within the ground, right? Within the hypothetical where lives are lost, where land is lost, resources used, whatever, whatever. <clears throat> but in order to get here, you have to have all these other pieces. Right? So at the link scenario, if you break the link, if you're focusing here, right, this isn't true because da 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 da. Then there's no impact. Right? The anchor falls away if you cut a chain link prior to the bottom. And it doesn't matter where you cut it at, the weight's gone. And the argument's true. Right? There's nothing to keep a tether to your client. Yeah. So an example of that, you might say, like, Russia won't declare war because they know that we operate under mutually assured destruction. Sure. Right, so you have a counterexample that had, is like a statement from Russia where they said that they wouldn't. You can have examples that would say the U.S. is already militarily engaged and it didn't happen, so it wouldn't, uh, which is true, right? You could have a number of arguments that would say it wouldn't happen. So that's kind of the way. And then you engage with the internal link scenario the same way, right? Where you would say this doesn't work because da 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 da, right? For example, in order to declare war. There are certain things that have to be met, right? Certain stipulations that have to be met. So you can argue it wouldn't happen for whatever reason, right? So that we never get to this whole flesh. Yes. Even the affirmation is like fiat. No. No. They could fiat military engagement, right? And they could argue that that military engagement is war. Right, but in this scenario, the way we have it set up, they haven't defined it as declaring war. Like in this hypothetical. Other questions? Yeah, you're trying to say like it was non-unique. Would you suggest that the social security would suggest that it's the status quo is per se? Uh, we're not actually on the brink of war with Russia, so this is non-unique. It could be one or the other. It could be um, that the uniqueness scenario isn't true, right? Which is one possible answer. But is it really a non-unique? It's just that there's a misunderstanding of what the situation is, right? Like, that's not the status quo. The non-unique says that, what? They're the same in different ways, right? Like, one says the uniqueness scenario is just untrue, 
and therefore like it doesn't hold, right? Like it doesn't make sense. It's not the status quo. And the other one says that, but also ties it specifically to the plan. Right? What's in this screen like uniqueness overwhelming the link and uh, not unique? So, uniqueness overwhelming the link is saying that this situation is so high, right? Like the tensions are so high that we're gonna fall off the cliff and right. Non-unique is saying the tensions aren't high. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay. The thing you don't want to do, and then, I mean, you guys can go past the time if you want to do. Um, but the thing you don't want to do is turn both the link and the impact. One or the other, never both. What do you mean by turn? Turn means that you're taking this argument mm -hmm. and saying this actually functions for me because of X, Y, Z. Right? So if it's military engagement, right? If it's destroying rebel, rebel civilian lives, right? The link term would argue actually this is what is the action that is most necessary to save these lives because if we don't, then Assad is going oh, okay. to destroy them anyways. Okay. Right? And then there's no protection, there's no support. Da, 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 da. Right? If you turn both of them, if you say, actually, this is going to save lives because da, 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 and it's the most important thing, and then you turn the impact, which then says, but this is a bad thing, right? Like, or this is a good thing, that the destruction should happen, which doesn't make sense in this scenario, I know, but in some it will. Right? Then you're saying, we're going to move the conversation this way, right? the direction of the argument is going this way, away from the bad thing. But then you're also saying that we're also turning the direction of the bad thing and saying it's a good thing. So then they're both coming to us. Yeah. Right. It doesn't make sense. It turns into a self-contradiction. Right. And it doesn't flow as much. Anything else? So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you.